Welcome everyone to Wrestling Is Cool, the coolest wrestling podcast on this planet. It's gonna be Sancho Rules, Mama Rhodes. How's it going? <laughs> Sorry, man. Like I, for some reason, have had The Rock's cadence of promos just in my everyday life just appearing. It's gonna be bagel. It's gonna be eggs. And it's gonna be breakfast. <laughs> I think you're taking a dig at The Rock. You know, this, this rock is an amazing rock. And by the way, I don't know if it was us. I don't know if it was you. I don't know who who's going to take credit for it. Cody Rhodes wants to give credit to the, the Rock's creative. But it is the internet community. We call them the final boss. It was us. It was us called in the final boss. It wasn't the Rock. It was us. To clarify, our viewers and our listeners have pointed that out. They've said we called him the final boss before yeah. everyone else. So the we, people we listening. That question. Yeah. yeah. The people listening, the people viewing, they know, they understand that someone here from The Rock's team, I don't know who you are, PR Sandy, but I know yeah. you're listening to this. Yeah, someone from the seven bucks, you might as well make it nine buck productions and add two of these best books right here, you know? Can you imagine, <laughs> can you imagine if, uh, if we get signed somewhere? Would you sell out? Awesome? Would you sell out to The Rock's team? <laughs> Because <laughs> I would, dude, I would become the biggest rock propaganda machine ever. I'd be like, Rock, I, I like, I'll take a part in your next movie, uh, in a, in a cool Millie, and now we'll turn this podcast into the most pro rock podcast you could possibly think of. Wrestling is rock. I mean, <laughs> at the same time, it makes sense. I mean, he keeps promoting us, he keeps saying wrestling is cool every five minutes, it seems. Santi, you have stumbled upon the gorilla position. It is Stump Santi, one of my favorite things. There are 27 inactive titles in the WWE. Can you name five? Oh, inactive? Oh, buddy, inactive. I, can, I can name you more than that. Uh, hardcore title, 24-7 uh, title, the uh, U European title. Uh, okay, the, well, there's different versions of the tag titles. I mean, you could even say the world heavyweight title, the big gold. Are you giving me those? Yeah, I'll give you the big gold. Okay, you're going to give me big gold. Universal title, if I really wanted to, I could say blue universal and red universal title. Um, okay. That's five right there, right? Uh, yeah, five. I'll give, give me one more. Okay, let me just think here. Early 2010s, I think every title is still around. Oh, Divas title. There it uh, is. WWE women's title, SmackDown women's title, Raw women's title. Okay. All right. We get it. We get yeah, it. Yeah. I'm just, I mean, I'm just, I'm just dunking on you now. No, it's fine. Uh, it's more of a, a promo because we have a TikTok for the Wrestling is Cool podcast, Wrestling is Cool POD. We're going to have more trivia games and we're going to do more games where we stump in Santi. Santi, I literally have 10, 10 games for you to play that I cannot wait to get to. Yeah, make sure you go watch them over on the on the TikTok. The link will be in the description well, of this around. video. Yes. <laughs> oh my god, dude! <laughs> come, dude, come on! What terrible timing! What terrible I timing! Know. The TikTok starts doing well, and your weird ass government down there in the United States is like hey, social security. Ah, I think we might we might we might up that to seventy. Ah, for who cares? Uh, wars. Ah, just a couple. Who cares? It's not a big deal. TikTok though. Oh. National security. <laughs> it's it sounds like Vince booking. I tell you what. <laughs> Is this the family. Vince era? The Vince era booking of Congress. <laughs> what happens when we don't absorb him in the red WWE? He goes elsewhere, and all of a sudden we're getting strange booking. But I'm gonna keep on trucking. I know I, I had my own TikTok, and it's like growing, but. I have faith, dude. I'm just going to keep going blindly into it. If not, I'll figure out a way. I'll, I'll move the operation to Canada. What can I say? Sancho, yes. this is not a wrestling-related question, but it's a question that stumped me on Patreon, oh, okay. and I wanted to ask it to you. Ooh, it's a would-you-rather. Yeah, it's just a simple would-you-rather not wrestling-related, and I'd be okay. very curious what the people at home think. Would okay. you rather, at some point in the day, your clothes spontaneously disappear once a day? It always happens. You just don't know what time. Oh, okay. I don't know what time. Or you, do, you just don't know what time. Or everything that you purchase moving forward is always used, including toothbrushes, including underwear. If you wear contacts, you're going to have used contacts. Everything, everything. Medical equipment used, everything. <sighs> it's a bit tougher. Wow. It's a bit tougher than you originally so probably like thought. Used water. 
I used burger. Everything. Used oh my God. everything. Hey, step up to the naked show every now and then. <laughs> hey, step on up, brother. Dude, you'd have to be so careful, especially like if, you know, you got Sancho dropping off the kids at school. It's like, all right, I need to be so quick. I need, <laughs> I'm going to be pedal to the metal. Is it, is it like a one frame, like a boop, boop? I, I think so. I think it's, yeah, they okay. just instantly dissolve. It's just like, boom, yeah. you're, you're, you're not naked. No, but do, and I get naked. It, do I get it back? Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, then it would be like, uh, people would think like, did I see that or did I not? Oh, no, 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 no. Hang on. Yeah, your, your clothes don't come no, back. No. Oh, no, they do. No, you no, you can't just make up the rules. No, you have to put on new clothes. I don't know. I don't know if you know this, but I can. All right. I don't know if you know this, Santi. Ever since Sancho Mania came back, ever since I came back, I have made the Wrestling Is Cool podcast cool again. You went ahead and got all these guest people. And then all of a sudden, when I come back, the greatest thing ever to happen to this podcast, Sancho Mania, brother, is running wild. If you took a look at the comments and continue with the comments and put some little uh, fire emojis to let them know that the brush fryer is running wild. Ever since I come back, you little Santi crybabies. Oh, he only, only does this to L.A. Glaze. Oh, I, every time he's L.A. Glaze, I tune out and I moan. Oh, Sanji, why can't you find other people? Wah, wah, wah. Cry about it. Facts are facts. Numbers haven't been better. Podcast numbers haven't been better. TikTok numbers haven't been better, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to Wrestling is Cool, coolest wrestling podcast on the planet. You could have been listening to that ridiculous rant that we just we, uh, we just had to witness. No rants, only promos here, baby. <laughs> only facts, facts, <laughs> no facts, no feelings. <laughs> and that is a fact of life. <laughs> you could have been listening to that three days earlier over on Patreon, <laughs> yeah, Patreon.com. <laughs> <laughs> patreon.com slash Zati's app check the link in any of the descriptions wherever it is that you might be listening uh for just a couple of extra bucks you're gonna get the wrestling is cool podcast three days early you're gonna get the raw review smackdown reviews and more so go check it out help us keep the lights on keep the mics on and help us be able to do wrestling is cool for as long as we're possibly capable of doing it go check it out yeah, it's already over like 500 people. So the Patreon's growing. It's strong. See? The community on See? there is, yeah, okay. See? All right, Sancho. Yeah, Sancho Mania came in here and it, 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 yeah, it's all you, dude. It's all you. Bask in the glory. Keith Lee over here, bask in it. Dude, I feel bad for Keith Lee, the wrestler, because Keith Lee, the food TikToker, just dominates. Every time. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, go, I go to Twitter, I'm like, oh, Keith Lee's trending? Cool do an AEW. Hey, Never mind. No. It's not him. Dude, I think it is physically impossible for Keith Lee, the wrestler, to to trend on anything because of just how little he's utilized. I remember, like, the last time I feel like he trended on anything social media related is uh, he came back from an injury in AEW because he seems to be injured all the time in AEW, unfortunately. Right. Um, and he came back with a big wizard's robe and a, a big... Big white, white beard, yeah. and people are just like, "Oh, he's been playing a lot of World of Warcraft." He came back in his in his mage phase. <laughs> That's pretty much the only time that like people online were actively talking about Keith Lee. What an unfortunate like post WWE career for Keith Lee. I feel like it's been because he was so I, good, he's so good. I feel like a lot of things when it comes down to AEW, and I know it's rare that we talk about it. Is it's just a lot of mistiming right now. I mean, if you would think about it, right now they have Okada, Will Ospreay. If MJF was 100% and Adam Cole's 100%, they would have two great storylines going forward. I mean, they have a great roster. It's just a matter of just getting everybody back on bat on board. It's also a matter of of utilizing this super stacked roster. Um, there's people that on that AEW roster that I just like never see that are so good that rarely get an opportunity to shine. And the right. show, the show where they're supposed to shine, I believe was meant to be Collision, right? They mm. they created that show for CM Punk and then people like Andrade went over there, Miro, uh House of Black. That was supposed to be the place where those guys get to shine. Um and 
no disrespect to the folks from CMLL and uh, the, the random people that sometimes they bring over from Japan to have these one-off matches, but they're taking time out of those eight full-time AEW roster members' ability to be able to showcase themselves because uh, there's a lot of Lucha Libre happening on, on Collision and as well as on... Uh, us on Rampage, which is cool. I, we even have uh, Mystica over there, uh, aka uh, Sin Cara doing things over there. Um, but they're not full-time AEW roster members. So when, you, when you're giving those people the limelight of primetime on Saturday, if primetime Saturday wrestling even exists, uh, it's a shame because then you're, you're putting aside a lot of the, the, the people that are on your payroll that should be getting this extra TV time. Alberto Del Rio, you think he comes back to WWE at some point? No, 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 I no there's too much bag. I, dude, I don't know how much you know about this, but that man has been accused of like kidnapping. Uh, and, like, yeah, dude, dude, it's it's not like, oh, you know, he had a, a domestic. He did what he did, but like full blown kidnapping. He's never coming back. <laughs> This is taking a, a. This is not the dark side <laughs> of the ring. This is wrestling as cool, Zanti. Yeah, like Al dude, Alberto Del Rio, in my opinion, was those guys. Was one of those guys that was given one of the greatest Latino gimmicks ever. I True. loved that gimmick that he was given. The Mexican aristocrat, his own personal ring announcer, the 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 Rolls Royces. He had. He was given the entire package. And he just never really clicked for me. I always sort of found them a bit bland, personally. I liked Ricardo Rodriguez, his ring announcer, more than Alberto Del Rio. It's kind of wild when a valet or manager gets more over than the actual talent. I think of Damian Sandow. Great example. Stuff. That's a perfect man. All did you like that? Was it's just so unfortunate. Like we talked about at the very beginning of the segment with A and W Miss Tommy, but there was so many great talent that just wasn't around during the Triple H era where we're in now, that they would be still in the WWE if they were given that chance, if they weren't suppressed. Um, you know, we talked about Miro and Rusev, right? We talked about, you just mentioned uh, Damian Sandow. Like, that whole thing was over. Cesaro was over, like, big time. And for some reason, they just got thrown away for nothing. But... It wasn't supposed to be over. That was the problem. Yes, that's what that's, that's the, big the thing. problem. That for you know, some reason Vince did not like things getting over that he didn't design to be over, like Zack Ryder in 2011. Right. And one thing I want I let's take a breather for a second here. I listened to a podcast with L.A. Knight. All right. He says his so himself that he wasn't supposed to be have any plans after Royal Rumble with Bray Wyatt. He said, I had no plans. My job was just to make Bray, Bray Wyatt look good, and that's it. And 2023, he became something, and he laid down the foundation for what he is. You pay attention when the glaze is happening. <laughs> you don't look around for your water bottle. There we go. You take the LA night glaze. It's about to happen, my oh, friend. Good. Audio listeners, I apologize. No, but the point I want to make is LA night feels himself that he got over when he wasn't supposed to get over. He had no plans. They they kind of flew with no radar. And all of a sudden, he's in a point right now where he feels where he has no sense of direction. And he's saying, like, all right, 2023, he's, for his own words, his own mouth, he said that this is the foundation of LA Knight. I've set the foundation. 2024 was supposed to be his legacy. Where is his legacy going to go? Is he going to be a guy who's going to make it the main event, get a title, or he's just going to fade away into, like, oh, I remember the LA Knight era. And that's the thing I'm just trying to say, folks. We need to keep L.A. Knight on the top of our list. The glaze must be fresh. We cannot let L.A. Knight get stale because he is a homegrown talent in a sense of going all the way up from NXT. He should be considered like the Nakamura's, the Sami Zayn's. The, that same kind of breath of energy, L.A. Knight deserves that same reverence instead of like, oh, this guy is, is not the best wrestler or this guy is just a attitude era remake type of guy no this guy's put in his dues Give i think people are love. over that i don't hear yeah. that anymore i feel like you're just trying to hang on to any yeah. ounce of existence no, of yeah. la night hate so that you can ride this yeah. la night propaganda i don't no, think that the la night hate exists anymore i like i feel like that time is up that, that and and, and the you, time is okay. now okay john first <laughs> off do you not believe that john's uh, that la night 
Mania program deserves a title. You Do thought you... he should be Logan Paul. If it wasn't for an RKO and a brass knuckle, Adam Chamber, he was on track to go up against Logan Paul. That's what you predicted. Oh, yes. But also, this is a situation where beggars can't be choosers. You have a what mania. Yeah. Yeah. You, you have you, a mania program. You have a mania program against a Hall of Famer, not just a WWE Hall of Famer, a professional wrestling staple across the world. You know who doesn't have a mania program? A oh. far bigger megastar in, in Bianca Belair. Tiffany Stratton. You don't have a mania program for Braun Breaker. You don't yet have a mania program. So for some of these names that, that deserve mania programs, and LA Knight has, for Bobby Lashley, LA Knight actually has a mania program. So know your role, Sancho, <laughs> okay. and just accept that at the very least you have LA Knight in WrestleMania and stop whining and complaining and being this LA Knight yeah. crybaby and wanting more than you deserve. He already got two world title shots in four months. What do you want? What do you want? Do you just want this guy to just run WWE? Do you want him to become yes. the president of, of TKO? I want you to join in the glaze, all right? I can't do this by myself. Do you no, understand? See, I'm, I'm knee deep in the glaze. You are drowning you're in it. You are so, yes. you, you're so blinded by it that you can't even see how great it is that you have LA Knight and WrestleMania against AJ motherfreaking Styles. <laughs> I did by the glaze. <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is even LA Knight is frustrated that he's not getting a title shot at Mania. He does. He feels like he deserves a Mania a, a title shot, which is in coinciding with Sami Zayn and, and Chad Gable. They all feel like they deserve a title shot at Mania. The, just considering the year that LA Knight has, I know you mentioned Bianca Belair. I know you mentioned Braun. I know you mentioned Tiffany Stratton. All fantastic talent. But compared to the, they did not have the same type of year that LA Knight had. Sure. It wasn't until CM Punk and Randy Orton came back, put LA Knight completely in the mid card immediately. And he didn't do anything to do that. He didn't get his rematch against Roman Reigns, typically against when anyone who does get a, a match against a, a champion. That's the only thing that I'm trying to say. And it's, by the way, your fault that you planted the seed for Logan Paul. You were like, you know what? He's going to get a, a title match against Logan Paul. That's my prediction. And I was like, I hated that idea, but I'll take it <laughs> at this point. I'll take it because we thought that would be a better program. But instead, we're still getting gold with Logan and, and Randy. The point I wanted to make is even the talent feel frustrated about this WrestleMania. A little bit. There's, there's like cracks of it that's coming out. Slowly and slowly, like, you know, why is the bloodline doing getting that? Why is Rock getting all this leeway? There's small, there's small little cracks in that roster. Remember that the entire WWE was fine. We were they were copacetic with how the track they were going. And if it wasn't for a CM Punk injury, all this would be totally different. We we would still be pushing towards WrestleMania, one of the greatest WrestleMania 40s of all time. And, and in WrestleMania, I would think so. But this is a different kind of let's figure it out. Let's get to WrestleMania by hook or crook it feels like and it's exciting it's a must watch tv but i think like you mentioned there's a lot of talent that it's on the outside looking in well let's talk about that talent on the outside looking in um for context sancho and for listeners there are 10 wrestlemania matches that have been announced wrestlemania 39 had 15 matches but two of them were those impromptu matches uh from the miz so they don't really count so they wrestlemania 39 went in with a total of 13 matches into the show so that right. gives wrestlemania 40 about two to three ma max more matches that it could potentially add i'm of the mind that it only has room for two because bloodline rock all of those entrances on both nights are going to take up a <laughs> lot of time they're going to take up a lot of time. So I'm going to throw a couple of matches at you. And I want you to tell me, does this get on the WrestleMania program? And how does it get on the WrestleMania program? You ready? So these are your matches that you think that should happen at Mania. These are, ma no, these aren't necessarily matches that I think should happen. These are matches that have a, these are matches that could happen because there's pro a program between these women or these men happening at the moment. Copy. Okay. okay? Bobby Lashley, Carrie and Cross. No. That's a pre-show match. Okay. I love I love Bobby. I think Bobby deserves another run. 
I think the year that Bobby has is you have to remember Bobby was a heel. Bobby's heel run did not last long because it just they he, they just couldn't get it going. Bobby's a, a tremendous face. The Street Profits and Bobby are ice cold in my opinion. They tried to run a program with them. Um, the biggest thing I would say for Bobby is just based on the year, and at the same time, there's there's nothing pizzazz about Karrion Cross in the Final Testament. They've giving everything to that program with the Final Testament, the Authors of Pain, and it's just not clicking to me. And more importantly, it feels like it's like Bobby deserves his due in terms of comeuppance against the Final Testament because he's been getting everything. Uh, he's been getting beaten up every time they're on camera, but I, I just don't see it. I don't see it as a kickoff uh, in terms of a you know opening match. I don't see it as a match before a big match. It's just to me, it's a great pre-show match for Karrion Cross and Bobby Lashley. What if it ended up being a faction versus faction? I mean, it's a, be a car wreck, right? But we got, we're going to have so many car wrecks on the Mania card, especially with the tag, six-man tag. And I already feel like the better faction versus faction is LWO versus Legato. Okay. That, that to me is a, that's a stronger faction versus faction. And I think it's not a Bobby problem. It's a final Testament problem that I'm seeing here for not having the mini. And I just think they just haven't had time to gestate yet a little bit. They like, where's like a elimination chamber cage match between the two where there, you know, there haven't been a lot of in ring battles between the two factions just yeah it's just a lot of run-ins and things of that sort and in the authors of pain i think only had one match and it was a squash match from yeah. what i remember maybe two matches max i mean it, it's been a very forgettable run either way but yeah the it's a shame because the final testament has gotten all the glitz all the glamour the new entrance the new tag team uh the paul ellering being involved with the tag team new theme song and it's just not clicking for me I will say, uh, in a world where, let's say I were to inherit WWE booking today as is, nothing changed, I don't think I can salvage this uh, into making it a good enough WrestleMania program. I think part of the reason is because we already got Bobby Lashley versus Karrion Cross on SmackDown, even though it ended in a disqualification about like 10 minutes into the match. That, uh, that alone ruins the hype of a potential WrestleMania match between those two. It was already like something we got on SmackDown, which to me shows and tells the world that this is a SmackDown worthy program, not a WrestleMania program. I think the biggest canary in the coal mine for that Matt, that feud is that Royal Rumble. Remember we were like, all right, Karrion, you're gonna have to have a great show in here at Royal Rumble to show that you mean business. And then he just gets eliminated yeah. just like that. And you're just like, well, I guess there's a, that's the Karrion's run. But at, at the same time, I would say the way to salvage this is you got to put Carrion back on NXT. Oh, Carrion on NXT would be awesome. I've been I've been wanting that to happen for quite a while now. But the other match that you mentioned was a, a faction war between Legato and LWO. So is that the route <laughs> that you think that? What? I'm sorry. Your shirt says looks like it says Al because you're backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Al. Yeah. Um. Uh, what was it? Oh, that's right. Legato or an uh, LWO at WrestleMania. Is that, do you, is that the route that you think they're taking? Do you think it's going to be faction versus faction or Ray versus Santos? See, that's the thing. Uh, I know you, you mentioned in the video, you know, you do have Ray versus Santos at SmackDown. I think that match won't have a long, like, drawn-out battle. It will be a short match that escalates into a faction versus faction, which I think is a great way to protect Ray. I don't know how long can Ray... How long can Ray put on banger matches in terms of, like, 20, 20, 15-minute yeah. matches? I think this is a great way to reserve Ray and a great way to showcase the rest of LWO. They've been doing some great work. I mean, they have some great spots. And when I watched Legato versus LWO recently, I was like, hey, dude, if they split the titles, I think LWO has a chance to kind of shine with their moveset and with their excitement that they have. I they remember bring. their names now. I don't know. Yeah, hit, hit me. Yeah. Cruz del Toro and Joaquin Wild because they've been that he, good. And I like where Legato is going. I didn't like the idea at first, but I like the way they're progressing as a heel faction, especially after adding Electro Lopez. It's a great kind of vibe that's working for them. And I think Santos is a great kind of like the, the, the he's like a good mid boss for in terms of the mid card level. Sure. And, and they're building them up in the right way. 
and I like the idea of, of why not do it if if this was Survivor Series, I think this would be a better match versus a Mania. Like if this faction was at a Survivor Series and you had an elimination and then it ended up being Ray versus Santos at the end, W. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I think it should be faction versus faction. I'm going to go one step further. Why not add Electra Lopez and uh, Zelina Vega Selena into Vega. the actual match? Uh, make it an intergender uh tag team match i'm okay with that as well to get more people more wrestlemania limelight or if they're not if the two ladies are not going to be involved in the match i want to see some crazy stuff from them on the outside fighting maybe even one of oh, them going sure. through a table that'd be great um but uh it's a shame what i will say is this i feel like ray and santos had a really really good story a good enough story to be wrestlemania worthy the story mm -hmm. of ray mentoring santos santos feeling like he was being almost ousted by carlito um not wanting to turn on ray but turned on ray took out his knee sent him to surgery and, and made him lose a few months of his career. That's good enough for a WrestleMania program right there. Plus it includes Rey Mysterio Hall of Famer. It didn't really need that much more beyond just that. Um, so I would have loved to see that as a WrestleMania match and it could still be that technically, but just the announcement of, of Rey challenging Santos to SmackDown, that ruins it. That ruins any possibility or any right. hype of that being on, on, on WrestleMania. Even if it ends in shenanigans, disqualification, everyone getting involved. Just the fact that it was announced for SmackDown tells the world, hey, this match is good enough for SmackDown. Unless, if, like I said, it boils over. Like, they just never get that match off the ground. We never see him. One Doesn't matter. It's just the announcement of the match is what I'm saying. It's telling the world it's good for free TV. So if it's good for free TV, how can we justify putting it on the biggest show uh, of Are the you year? Tell me that that Becky versus Nia Jax was not a good enough for Mania kind of vibe. That was a good match, man. It was a that very was a, good match. Absolutely that was a very fantastic good match. match for, great match for free. Are you telling me? Liv Morgan versus uh, well, who, who they go up against? Becky couldn't couldn't go on on a mania. Well, that's not the that's not necessarily the point that it can't go on mania. I'm saying that the that the aura, the WrestleMania aura, is sapped from it by simply being announced or appearing on Raw. That's all I'm saying. Is it well, good it, enough? It absolutely can be. Well, I was going to add to that. It was I've noticed that to add to your point, to back up your point, is a lot of things that in terms of Triple H booking is. You remember when a promo would happen between a face and a heel and they would get like close face to face? Mm -hmm. It would always end in some kind of a scrum or like punches and they would get separated like almost 80% of the time. I noticed in Triple H's era, a lot of the times like Drew versus Seth, Sammy and Gunther, a lot of promos are not ending with blows like Rhea and Becky. They are saving the altercations for Mania. To, to kind of back that up one more time is I feel that Rock... Roman, Cody, and Seth. I think I my gut tells me it will escalate to like a brawl at the very end, but maybe they don't touch at all until Mania. Yeah, I wouldn't and have. They're touch. saving. Like, that's what I mean. Like you, you don't want any of these guys out of the four to appear weak physically. You don't want The Rock to appear weak. You don't want a lot of questions to happen. So there's there so many things that I find interesting in the buildup and how they're handling these feuds between it. But I think you have something there when it comes to Legato and LWO where they are giving away a lot before Mania. Yeah, yeah. But I, I still think that they're, that a Legato versus LWO deserves to yeah. be on WrestleMania. Um, Kabuki Warriors, we got an announcement that Asuka's injured. I don't know. That was I, a bummer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, not luckily because the, the word luckily is 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 almost an oxymoron in this in this situation with Asuka being hurt. Um, but on the bright side, they have Dakota Kai that could step in and do the free bird free rule, bird. Yeah. right? They, so they could do that. Um, do you see this is perhaps where they include Bianca, Bianca and Naomi? They've already started to lay the foundation for those two potentially working together. We have the storyline of Bianca Belair not wanting to help anything regarding damage control and Bailey because admittedly mm -hmm. they made their, her life a living hell, which is nice. I love the fact that this isn't the Vince era of booking where Bianca would have been like, oh, shucks, I'm the good person and I'm going to go help. No, like she remembers all of the awful things that they 
did to her and she is acting as a character that remembers those horrible memories that's that's a triple h thing he actually uses the things in the past to impact the the storytelling and the character of the present which i love um but now we have them beating up naomi which we could see then potentially that's where uh, Bianca Belair is able to step in. And then we'd have Bianca versus Naomi versus Kabuki Warriors or Kyrie and, I and Dakota question. Kai. That's, you, you set that up nicely. But my question is, I know when it comes down to, you know, my, my hang up about LA Knight's position in Mania, there are plenty of legends that have a run in at Mania and they make an appearance that have a great pop rock. Stone Cold, John. They all have that ability to do that Hulk if you want to throw him in there. Would it be a setback for Bianca to have like a run in spot at Mania to set up a feud with Bailey? Like if, for example, or Naomi, like, like uh, Bailey gets jumped after winning and then Bianca comes in for the save. You think, oh, Bianca's here to save Bailey, but no, she's there to challenge Bailey and she hits her with the EST, some, something like, or the KOD, like something like that to get that going. Cause I mean, it kind of reminds me of how Becky comes into SummerSlam and, you know, defeats Bianca to get a, that kind of a launch pad. Cause I think right now what's hurting Bianca is that she doesn't have a program and she, she's kind of being inserted into this damage control Naomi one, which is kind of a kind of a left field because at the same time, remember Jade Cargill yeah. is kind of being slated in with this damage control thing too. So there's so many like women's wrestlers trying to be shoved into this damage control storyline, which doesn't really need it. It should just be Bailey and damage control. So my thing is, would it be a setback? My question to you is if Bianca was just there for running without a match to set up a launch point for her for the rest of the year. I do, mostly because I'm of the mind. I don't love when WrestleMania is used to launch future stories. WrestleMania, no, really? I don't love it. I feel like th that's why everyone hated WrestleMania 27. The main event was just there to launch the main event of WrestleMania 28, Cena versus Rock, and it completely belittled the main event of Cena A versus Miz, Miz right. that year. That's what, uh, that's obviously that's like the absolute worst of those situations um that's left a bad enough taste in my mouth where i really don't like when mania matches are used to launch new stories going in mm. past mania i feel like mania should be uh the blow off or or just involving the people that are in the ring i i i'm not a big fan of of, no. of that so 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 because of that, then I don't know if Bianca should be inserted into damage control because she's literally only have one, one seed, like the smallest seed to say like, hey, she has a problem with Bailey, and hey, she has a, she's not going to help Naomi, and it, and 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 at the same time, it feels like a re, rehashing or a redo of Drew McIntyre. Should Drew McIntyre be forgiving to Jay? And it's the same thing. Should should Bianca Belair be forgiving to Bailey? It's the same kind of thing that's happening again. I just don't know. Does that mean Bianca go heel? Or does that mean yeah. that she remains a face? Because she is money as a face. And she makes a lot of money for the company as a face on sponsorships and things like with Cricket Wireless and things of that sort. So I, I don't know. I, I just feel that Bianca does deserve a better spot in the Mania card. But I think they're just running out of time. Which is the the unfortunate thing. We're three weeks away by the time of this recording from Mania. If they could get it going nuclear heat, maybe. Yeah. Maybe they go maybe they go Naomi and Bianca versus the Buki Warriors with the Freebird rule or the Kota Kai, which has been a fantastic show in her first match oh, after six she's months. So injured. good. So good. Fantastic all around performer. And despite her size, it looks like she's out there hurting people and getting like she sells great too. But I don't know. My, that's my question is I did, I did believe Bianca deserves a run at Mania. She is a historically one of the best women's wrestlers in the car in the of the all time when it comes to WWE and a former champion, but it's yeah. just the run out of time, brother. You you have to have her in some capacity. That's your biggest star, your your biggest draw in in your women's and, and division. Did she lose last year in Mania? Uh nope. She yes. beat Oscar. No, nope. she beat Oscar. 
um, she retained. She lost the title to Oscar next month at uh, Night of Champions, uh-huh. but she beat Oscar. Because um, I was like, you can't, you can't have John Cena lose in front of the Make a Wish yeah, kids, yeah, and then yeah, make yeah. Bianca lose exactly, in front of those, exactly. those dancers. In, look, here's what I, what the way that I see it. I think it's better to have Bianca on the card than not. Absolutely, obviously, I don't think that that's a controversial statement. If you're gonna have her in this tag match, then I feel like the you have to change your mentality because you're saying like, oh, like, is it even worth it at that point? There's very little heat, and and I totally get that. But then at that point, it would be less the the match doing something for Bianca, and it would be more Bianca doing something for the match, which would be to help elevate those other women to be in the ring with a megastar in the WWE and to help elevate those really stagnant women's tag titles because we have now a megastar going after them. That's That's the... The upside that I see to potentially Bianca Belair getting inserted into this, even if it is with very little fanfare is not the right word because Bianca has really hardcore fans and whatever she does, like she's going to get the fanfare, but with very little build, I it, like, I mm-hmm. still think that you can get away with it because it's Bianca Belair. I agree with you. My point is, is that I'm hoping that the WWE takes these three weeks and really asserts Bianca into this rather than being a backstage segment, get her in the ring, give, give her some sort of reason why to go after those titles. Is it a way to, you know, take away power from damage control? Is it a way to insert herself and back up Naomi? There's so many ways that they could approach this to give Bianca that little bit of gas going into Mania. Because one of the biggest kind of, um, I, I, I guess, I lazy, lazy attitude that the WWE sometimes has with their women's roster is that they think that their name is enough, which it can be. And that was my problem with the uh, Elimination Chamber Becky Lynch. I was like, you guys are just leaning on her name. And she had two, two kind of mediocre promos. But now what they did with Bian- Becky Lynch now is they inserted her into this ring, gave her a lot of in-ring time, Gave her some fantastic matches with some great wrestlers to promote to show the world that she's still Becky Lynch, the man, and she can take out Rhea Ripley. And that's what I'm thinking. There's just a little thing that they need to add, the little cherry they need to add to Bianca Belair to remind the world she's the EST. She had a great show in Royal Rumble. She stood up to Jade Cargill. Let me see that power and some of that action into that mega stardom going into Mania in SmackDown or at least Raw. Like, yeah, get, get, and and separate. I know that there's a brand split, but bro, we're running out of time, bro. I mean, some of these wrestlers on Raw. Let's get everybody going, get everybody cooking at the same time. Look, what I will say is, and what I think everyone can agree with, this is not the best spot for Bianca Belair. No. Okay, we understand that. Number one, it would have been the probably toss Jade up Cargill. Jade Cargill or Charlotte, because they were they would have both been dream matches. Right. It would have been Jade Cargill, Charlotte. This is just something, something, anything. What it tells me as well as Jade Cargill is not ready. Bro, I'm so nervous about that. I'm so, I'm genuinely concerned about that. I'm not nervous. I think what makes you nervous though, is that Jade Cargill was booked to be a star at AEW and she was, she was their star, their, their champion. I think what it is, is rather than put her out there now and risk not floating or, or sinking too soon. The WWE is realizing that we have a mega star, like blue chip rookie here that we need to make sure they are completely ready for the main roster. And they understand that they, they, they could sacrifice a mania or two um, to get her going. And I, I, I don't mind that. I think that I'd rather have that because, you know, she still is green. There is shades of it during that rumble. There's like a little bit of it. But I, I, I just don't, I, it just makes me say like, all right, Bianca and Jade, it's not, it's not ready yet. It's not ready. So you gotta let it, it cook a little bit longer. She's not more green in terms of experience than Tiffany Stratton. So are we saying that Tiffany Stratton is just such a generational <laughs> talent that, no, she, uh, that hey, she's so far ahead, so which I think it's true, which I think she, re- she is a generational talent. It, yes. Yes. It reminds me of Kurt Angle, right? Kurt Angle is the kind of player is the same guy everyone said Kurt Angle is a generation guy he just gets it there's yeah. people that just get it and I think Tiffany Stratton gets it but at the same time she's a homegrown talent she went up through that's the true ranks, she gets they the were system a- they were able to make sure her promos are clean make sure she understands how to work the hard cam make sure all these kind of little details 
that a WWE superstar needs to be polished. They chiseled her exactly how they wanted to be chiseled. Right. And With Jade Cargill, they inherited somebody else's artwork that they're trying to correct. Right. It's, you know, it's like when I when I come in into the you know, wrestling community, you know. Yeah, you're the Jade great. Cargill of the of the Jade of the Cargill. wrestling community. I look great. I look great. You know, what I mean? I'm a mega star, and I keep I trying to 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 physically beat yeah, this yeah. this uh, these LA night behaviors out of them, you but it's just not working. I can't. I fell in love. This man reminded me of the Attitude Era. And you know what's the shame? Is when the real Attitude Era shows up at the front doorstep. And it's like, oh, it's the real rock here. Yeah. And he's going to take all of those promos here. But shout out to Ellie Knight. He got a promo in. Finally. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I appreciate you giving my man some time on the stage, on the mic where he deserves. Yes. Hey, hey. He said, let me cook. He did say, let, let me cook. cook. Speaking of Attitude Era, do you think that the WWE is uh, trying to create a wave of attitude era-esque feeling with, with getting signs? trying to bring uh, get fans to bring signs hey no disrespect to the the dude on monday night raw recently but that dude had like seven or eight signs Did you notice the guy middle hard cam he had the uh call rikishi he had uh <laughs> mo he had multiple dom signs he had a mat he had a sign for every match Shout out to him, all right? He's trying to win. He's trying to get some screen time. Dude, that'd be so annoying to carry around. That's part of the reason. Well, part of the reason, the main reason why I don't bring a sign is because I find it really annoying if I'm sitting behind somebody with a sign, so I don't want to be that right. guy. Um, right. But also just carrying them around, like, to, to the show and to the arena, like, it's just such a pain in the ass. Unless you're planning on bringing an I Love Santi or Wrestling is Cool sign. Uh, it, or Sancho Mania. No, throw that one out. No, no, somebody <laughs> said that someone DM'd me and said they were gonna bring a Sancho Mania sign at the last uh SmackDown and they were on ha hard cam sign. Yeah, I, I also not, got an email that I inherited eight hundred million dollars from a Nigerian prince and that hasn't happened oh, wow. either. You're saying that the Sancho Mania is a scam? I believe that it's is a not dude, true. it's a Ponzi scheme. If I, you if you would step down from your ivory tower and come down to the comment section in the mud, and if you sat with us, you would see the Sancho Mania era has begun. The grassroots yet. movement. Exactly. And before you know it, we're going to take down your tower just like what was it in Lord of the Rings 2. What's that other wizard? The Chris, the so, Chris, so we the, went Gatsby to Lord of the Rings to yes. Two Towers. Yes, yes. You know that wizard I'm talking about? Yes, I, I, I saw him on. No, the, the yeah, yeah, the, the other guy, the the Star Wars guy, the yeah. guy that was in Star yeah, Wars. Yeah, Saruman. I know my yeah, Lord of the Rings. Yeah, that's you. That's you coming out of your tower. So surprised that the trees are attacking your tower. <laughs> Not the trees. <laughs> yeah, the hobbits. That's us. Every, every time I think of that scene, if you want to go watch it, I think it's like, because he looks like he's wearing his robe. And I imagine him eating a bowl of cereal before realizing that he's being attacked. <laughs> and he's like, oh my God, I've, what's happening? I haven't done my morning yoga stretches. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what he looks like when he's like looking over his tower. And that's you, my friend. When you realize it's too late, Sacha Mania has run wild, brother. Uh, we're talking about some people that are being left off of Mania. I don't, I, I don't think he's going to be left off of Mania, like as in not appearing, because I think he's going to be the 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 Rocky to Adonis Creed here. I think oh, that okay. Chad Gable is going to play that I mentor that. role, that coach role, the Chad Gable way to Sami Zayn against Gunther. Which I look, look, look. I'm trying to get excited over Sami Zayn versus Gunther. So in the comments section, I don't want you to say, well, Santi, it would be way better if it was Gable. I know, I know, because I still think it's really weird that they gave Gable all of the best WrestleMania quality like promos, all of the best WrestleMania quality like motivations to go after somebody and to win a match, only for him to not be given the opportunity to win said match. I think it's weird, I'm with you, I get it. We want Gable. It's just not going to happen. And even even though we're not going to get Gable, I'm not going to let the wrestling community prevent me from enjoying Sami Zayn versus Gunther because that will objectively be an absolute banger. Just remember that. So let's give this an opportunity and let's give this a chance because it's what we have. So let, it's the meal we've been given. What are you just not going to eat? You just you just get a star? Did you say not going to eat? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, so what do you see Chad Gable playing into this? I'm still going to stick to my guns that there there is a, a potential heel turn. After seeing Raw, I do see that mentorship thing where he's wearing the suit and Sammy's like, tell me, what do you see? Why, can, why do you see that I can't mm. beat 
Gunther and, and Gable's like the best. He's like, listen, you are the underdog. You only win when there's an opportunity, when there's a window of opportunity, and Gunther just does not give any windows of opportunity. This dude is perfect type of guy. He's the Avon Drago. Yes, and, and what's interesting is people, there's always at the back burner, and they've always said this for Cody Rhodes, is that we're this mania is in Philadelphia, the backyard of Rocky Balboa. So hear me out, Santi. You stumbled upon my fantasy booking, and the great thing is, a broken clock is right twice a day. Does, does LA Knight win the IC title? <laughs> Here comes LA Knight. Uh, so here's how they would book it if they were really leaning into Rocky and Chad Gable. Sami Zayn gets hurt at Mania on the way, beat up by Imperium. Something happens to Sami. We cut back to him in the backstage. He's like, I'm holding his knee. Chad Gable walks up. He's like, are you okay? Kind of like a Mr. Miyagi type of thing. What's going on? Let me help you out. Right, right, a little bit. And then Gunther is sitting in the ring waiting for his opponent. No Sammy. He's just like, ha. Sammy's he's not. Hey, Sammy, you're not here, Sammy. <laughs> and so he's not going to fight Sammy, right? And all of a sudden, shoot, dun, 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 dun. out comes Chad Gable to give us the match that everybody wanted. And what's interesting is uh, there was a little report that Booker T was telling, was Sammy was telling Booker T that he was surprised that the people didn't want him to be at Mania against Gunther. And that's just the way the cookie crumbles, Sammy. I'm sorry. I mean, Santi sent it best, is that he's not getting the same rub or build. And I still don't believe that you need a title, Sammy. Like, I didn't buy your whole thing about, oh, I need a path to WrestleMania because that's where I need to get a title. I was like, that's not you, Sammy. But I do believe Chad Gable needed to redeem himself because he's haunted. And I and I there's a back of my mind is he could still screw over Sammy. And it'd be awesome. It's possible. It's possible. I, I just love when wrestlers are going after titles, but the motivation is more than the title. Like e even if you look at um, for example, Rock Austin 17, even though like the Rock obviously wanted to 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 win the title and retain, there was there it felt more than that. He kept saying, like, Austin, you don't understand. I have to beat you. Cause he'd already lost him. Like I, for myself, I have to beat you. I like those added personal motivations and the go and the gold at that point just becomes, um, a physical manifestation of them succeeding at achieving that personal goal. Those are the storylines that I absolutely adore that I love. And they gave it to Gable, dude. They literally gave it to Gable, a guy, everyone else everyone else was talking about the ic title every like during those promos into the gauntlet match the only one that didn't talk about gold was gable that's uh, that, that's that's the the creme the creme de la creme of storytelling they gave it to him and they didn't execute and i still think that's weird i still think that's bizarre which is why yeah, I, so I think he's going to be involved somehow and and you know i think your stupid idea works <laughs> stupid. <laughs> stupid it's a great story to tell like how far is a man willing to go to get where he needs to to free himself <gasps> what from if his demons? What, what if they steal the storyline from nxt where carmelo hayes was actually the one that attacked trick williams you want your gable heel turn what if it's gable that secretly attacks oh, Sami Zayn? that's cool okay, uh, okay. now we're going hey, 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 back and forth <laughs> You see what happens when you join, join in the fun? Yeah, I made your dumb than... idea of good. And the way you, <laughs> you, 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 just because you showed up like the stupid ratatouille rat, and you put your little whoop whoop, and you think it's all of a sudden the best thing ever, you dumb rat. <laughs> I, I, would you ever eat a meal cooked by a rat? Would you ever wear used contacts? We go back to the beginning of the show. No, I wouldn't, but would you eat a meal cooked by a rat? Yeah, I think so. A rat. Santi, who touched your food? Well, I mean, like if it's, if it, if he's qualified, <laughs> like I mean, we're talking about like a chef. I just I'm the mission sorry, rat. I don't discriminate. You speciest. It's a rat, dude. Okay, but like <laughs> I, I, the assumption is if he's in a kitchen cooking, that he's taking all of the same hygienic steps that a regular human chef would. Sorry, I didn't mean to say regular human chef, insinuating that chefs. Can only be regular if they're human i'm sorry to the rats of the world i didn't mean to to put you in a corner like that do you smell what remy is cooking dude? <laughs> dude you wouldn't dude. eat the, the ratatouille's dishes if you if knew. i found out if i found out from her if it was made from a rat no i don't eat two day old i don't eat two day old leftovers santi i'm that kind of guy wow 
I don't do it. I'm sorry. Like two day old pizza? Like that's been in the what fridge. You, you're insane, dude. Not, not me, dude. Dude, with not with, gonna do it. With starvation across the world, you can't even bring yourself to eat just a two day old refrigerated pepperoni pizza. You disgust I order, me. I order responsibly. All right. I don't order order. All right. I know my orders to a T. This man was saying that I was standing at the top of this ivory tower. That right there is the most bourgeois, plurita I don't think I, pluritarian is the right word. I'm just trying to think of what they call the, the super rich people during the, the Soviet revolution. He is the one holding the people down. The have not, the haves. The, the have haves, not. we're the have not. Why are we teaching our audience historical <laughs> and, and, and fictional? The bourgeoisie. <laughs> You remember that um, there was that one movie, uh, Road Trip, and, and the very end, the the guy was like, "Hey, I I need to study for this. Uh, what was it the the philosopher thing?" And he couldn't understand it, so they related to the WWF, and he kind of tied no, it all oh, together. Oh, I was thinking Euro Trip. No, I I can't remember that movie, Road Trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he was like, "Let me tell you. Let me just relate it to wrestling." He was able to ace his test because they blended the two together. Oh, that's uh, awesome. I'm gonna have yeah. to watch that. Uh, Cena yeah. at Mania. What do you see him doing? Oh, God. I'll tell you Look what I think. I'll, I'll tell you Look what I think. You. No, 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 no. Listen, All listen. Right. Oh, stop, Let me stop. Sit down enough. For this. Enough. Enough. Listen up. All right. The doctor of Thugano of Sunkinomics is Ricky, here. Ricky Stanicky OF subscriber. Man, first of all, that got me a John Cena follow. Um, Sidetrack, that movie sucked. I did not like Ricky What Stanicky. do you mean? I it did not didn't suck. It did not. It quick, was a quick review. Quick review. Go. Sure. Uh, it was very forced humor. Um, uh -huh. Santino, the red guy, the redheaded yeah. guy. Uh, Andrew. Too mean. Like a, an unlikable character overall. Just a very, very mean-spirited man i did not okay. like that uh mm -hmm. ricky stanicky just it, it landed on just so many coincidental positive landmines where oh like the the owner of this giant hedge fund isn't gonna do a background this company this giant hedge fund doesn't do background checks for their for their employees making two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. so you accidentally hire ricky stanicky who actually is a man that's what what does he call them boner jams that sings boner jams it's, it's, it's jizz jams. Jizz jams. Sorry, that's so much worse. Somehow boner jams, somehow boner jams was just a lot, a lot more tame. Um, I don't know, man. I just felt like it was a movie of, not that I don't like uh, hijinks, but the hijinks was just a little too ridiculous and, and too convenient. Too many plot conveniences. Who are you? Clip that and send it to John Cena. No, don't do, no don't, you do don't, don't do that. No, don't do that. You don't deserve it. I think Ricky Stinky is a great movie for what it is. It's a great prime video. Like, hey, it's on the services. You could watch it stream. It's amazing. I think what makes it you're not seeing what I see is that John Cena was able to find a little bit of a soul in a ridiculous character in Ricky Stinky. And he was able, like, for him as an actor to find something, to, a little bit of humanity in that character. Sure. I'll give you that. I do. I, do, I, I agree with that. Um, I still, uh, um, how dare you? I still Send give that John. movie like a four out of 10. Wow. Four out of 10. John, you follow this dude. <laughs> you follow this dude. Cena and mania. Um, he's mentioned that he's free. He's available and is willing to work at WrestleMania. Oh, yeah. Whether well, I'm free and I'm available and I'm willing to work at mania. That doesn't mean squat. Yeah. Something. You're just not John Cena, dude. Um, yes, no, you're not. I, yes, I, I can confirm. You're not John Cena. <laughs> You're you don't see me. That's why. Oh, do, 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 do. Um, what do you see him doing? Backstage segment? Does he cut out, come out and cut a promo? Uh, just kind of hyping people uh, up. Yeah. Or my 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 thought uh, that I, I I talked about this in a video was uh, kind of like how the Miz had a, a an impromptu match night one and night two. I could see him having one of those super quick impromptu matches with uh, night one and night two with Theory and Waller across both nights because he's got history with both of them. And they have nothing to do at WrestleMania. I believe, realistically, he hosts WrestleMania. I think that's Punk. I, you I think, think Punk hosts? Really? I, think that's, I think that's what they're announcing. That he... Uh, and on Raw, the he was Phil talking Philadelphia. Phil yeah. Philadelphia that uh, he was gonna for sure be at Philadelphia. Now that he's announced for Monday Night Raw, I, that he, I'm pretty sure he's the one hosting. Uh, yeah, but I'd rather have John host because he's much more charismatic in that role. Yeah, we we I, saw him though host already a show. He hosted yeah, he Payback. If you remember, he did do he great. Did great. Yeah, he did he do did great. great. 
And at the same time, I think he deserves this little, you know, little dog and pony show out there. Let's take him out there to give him the, the Hogan role, you know? And sure. he excels so much better than Hogan ever did at that role because he's more put together. And at the same time, I think John Cena, no, hey, sit down. Oh, you I, are sitting. Great. I am sitting down. Take a deep breath. <gasps> Whatever program he does does not benefit anyone that he works with. Oh, it's a meaningless program. It's, it's, so, so, so yeah, yeah, I agree. So even if it's Grayson Waller, even if it's Austin Theory again, the only thing he should do is launch point another storyline, which I know you don't like, but if he got involved with Waller and Austin Theory, it needs to be to offset Austin Theory to turn on Waller. Like again, oh, Waller, that I wouldn't left. mind. That yeah. I wouldn't mind. Like if, yeah. if, if it is, so I guess I was a little confused. I thought you were talking about jumping off a story involving John Cena. No, like if he can be the catalyst yes. to create the storyline between Austin Theory and Grayson Waller, that I'm okay with. But that's yeah. be, um, that's different than my complaint from earlier because they don't have a match. They don't have a program. Exactly. Right now. That's what... So so that that actually does work for me. I you know what I I don't hate that. I just um, I'm with you. I don't think that working with Cena at the moment benefits anyone right now in the long term we saw that with solo sokoa but i do think it benefits them in the moment right there and now okay all right buddy uh for audio listeners uh sancho keeps thumbing himself i'm not gonna explain to you where he's thumbing himself i'm gonna just let you in the sokoa spot in the sokoa spot is that what that's called the s spot (laughs) uh yeah so gotta wear a hoodie and then show up (laughs) So I do Did see him. Hurts? I do see him being there, but I don't. I, like I'm, I'm mostly just excited to see Cena. But well, t- to be fair, he deserves to be on Mania. I I always feel like people, if you approach Mania this way, it's a way to reward people who worked that year and who benefited the company, who boosted the company. And John Cena had that great run hmm? and really carried the company and helped carry the company with LA Knight when Roman Reigns was not there. That's true. And like, yeah, he didn't do a tiny little run. He was there for like three months. No, he was there for a long time. Quick question real quick. Do you think the future of like these big mega stars, for example, uh, when I want to say is these big future, like John Cena's, The Rocks, The De Pististas, instead of doing a movie, which kind of knocks them out of their schedule for like four or five months, six months, that because of TKO, they're able to sign them for the year to work a year in a program, like a whole mania run because that's why i believe the rock is there he got paid 30 million to instead of doing a movie he signed on to the wwe for two years and this is his movie this is what the rock would be doing if he had a movie run granted it's a little bit more dangerous because it's in the ring but a 30 million dollar payout is the biggest payout you could have for for even a movie for crying out loud yeah that's robert downey jr numbers yeah, and, and this is this is The Rock doing one of Zubet. And I, I would say it's his best performance he's ever had and everything. So my question to you is, I think they paid John for his little run, and that's going to be something I see a lot in the future, like renting out these mm. part-timers for for the equivalent of a movie. Cause, of a movie shoot, yeah. Yes, for a movie shoot, because, you know, wrestling's getting better in terms of protecting their stars. They're not asking them to do crazy things or keeping them within their wheelhouse. I don't think John Cena took any crazy bumps in that last run. He was very safe. I think the, the probably the, <laughs> yeah, the, stuff, yeah. <laughs> the Sokoa spots, but uh, no, I, I just see that as a future. Like it's a great way for these stars to come back to consider. They could use this as a revenue uh, point, not necessarily like, to offset their movie time. I'm with you. And, and I do like the idea of uh, TKO having some deeper pockets and an understanding that bringing these guys in for for a hefty dollar mar- uh, number brings in a benefit of not necessarily maybe immediate direct revenue right then and there with like t-shirt sales or whatever, but like long-term benefits of, you know, like imagine the, the value of when they're on Netflix and you being able exactly. to look up, hey, this was The Rock's run. Let me watch all of the episodes from The Rock's run. Let me watch all of the episodes of Batista's run. Um, because one of the really, really neat things with them going streaming, and I know it sounds like I'm going off completely off topic, but I'm not because it's still in the world of movies and, and television. Um, serialized television off of streaming services 
has a problem and that problem is that it can't carry super super long storylines that's why you look at a show like friends big bang theory these these sitcoms their <laughs> their storylines end right after the episode ends that's because they started in an era before streaming Right. And it would have been really difficult for them to carry long storylines because then you would have had to find a rerun of the previous episode in order to keep or to, have it taped or have it or taped or buy the box set or whatever it might be uh, with streaming that completely went out the window because now you can go back and watch all of the episodes of the of the office, all of the episodes of Modern Family, whatever it might be. And in order, in order if so you can get the storyline from beginning to end and you're not missing anything. Not that WWE doesn't do that on TV, but it is difficult when you're trying to bring in a new fan because what's their questions immediately? Well, what's the storyline? Why do I care about these guys fighting these guys? Like, what's the what's going on here now with Netflix, the ability for people to go back to previous episodes instantly without looking for um, for for reruns or anything like that on TV is going to make that so much more accessible. And it, especially like if they're looking for the run of their specific favorite actor. And that uh, compile with that, the way watching a SmackDown or watching a Raw they're all in different copyright. They all have different licenses, and you don't know if it's going to be on the Peacock. You can't. Even, they're not even putting old Raws and Smackdowns that are fresh, that just happened a week prior. They're not even putting them on Peacock. You have to have them DVR on Sling. And even if you have like a service like Sling, it's usually like two weeks back because someone else owns the license. It's so confusing. So to have a centralized area, I do ag agree with that. And I do think it will benefit. And what it, it will bring in more celebrities. It will bring in the, that stardom. Hey, you're a country star or you're a musician that wants to get involved in Netflix. Boom, come on by Raw. You will be on Netflix that day. We will have you on the, the thumbnail or whatever. And now you're on Netflix. Hey, you're an up and coming TV actor or you're some kind of a movie you're star. Timothy that... Chalamet. Timothy. Timothy. You, know, <laughs> you know, you're out there. <laughs> what was that? What did they say? Have you seen Dude 2? Dude, that movie rules, I haven't man. seen it yet. Oh, um, my but God. The reason I saw that is because I found a TikTok of, like, actors explaining how to say their, like, their, full, their, yeah, their names. Timothy. And Timothy Chalamet is Timothy. Did you hear Jake Gyllenhaal? No. Yeah, because he's just like, yeah, the only people that know how to say Jake Gyllenhaal correctly are people in Sweden and people in Ikea. It's like, Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> hey, Jake Gyllenhaal, he might appear. What's the, what's the amazing thing is, quick aside, Timothy Shanley, dude, a YouTuber. Out there doing his thing. I didn't know he was a YouTuber. What? Yeah, dude. He used to be a YouTuber. He used to have a YouTube channel where he would sell modded Xbox controllers. No way. What, yeah, was, the, what was the name of his company? I, I don't know, but he would modify his own Xbox controllers and sell them. That's and, rad. And he would do like raps and skits like that when he was in high school and he would post on YouTube. But that dude is a, is a content creator doing his thing. And first ever back-to-back, back-to-back -back box office box, number one. Yeah. Dude. Shout out to Timothy. Friend Timothy. of the show. <laughs> Friend of the show. You need to show up in Raw. I'd be down for that. I'd be down. Why I think not? we're at that point that they could just show up. Was was the day was the Tanya Zadea? Woo. Yes. You know what? If yes. we're talking about Timothy Chalamet, I think we can wrap up the show. Thank you so much for <laughs> listening to this episode of Wrestling Is Cool. Quick thing. Yes. I have a quick announcement. I have expanded the, the Glaze Factory. We what? have a new wing. Okay, for those of you who we're love hiring. going to, uh, yeah, we're hiring. I just want you to hop on board the Drew McIntyre. It's a whole new section, a whole new flavor glaze for Drew McIntyre. It's a little minty. He is on fire. Great promo against Seth. The best thing he's ever done. And he says he, he bloody earned it. And he's like, I don't care if I have to roll you in the ring, carry you in the ring. I earned this shot. He said so many awesome things on that Monday Night promo. And he made Seth look stupid in my mind. Dude, he, well, he's been far and away the best thing in that feud. Like, give him the flowers, dude. Give I agree. Him, give him the title. Give him the title. Give him everything. Give him. Give, dude, you, whatever are you, he are wants. you? Are you? Are you joining? Are I, you, I've are been you? on it. I've been on it. I, dude, I'm the president. Are, would you like I to work in this wing of Glaze? What do you mean work for you, buddy? Come, You've been no, working on. for me this whole time. I'm the president CEO of the oh, of no. the Drew McIntyre Glaze. You didn't. Is it, you're the final boss. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> this whole time, I didn't know. 
Uh, if you're listening on YouTube, remember you could have gotten this three days early on Patreon, patreon.com slash Zav. If you're already on the Patreon, thank you so much for supporting us and what we do. You could also make sure, uh, listen on audio services. So don't forget about that as well. Our audio services, we're crushing it over there. Uh, Sancho, what are you working on? Um, and we actually, I have a couple of announcements for the wrestling school. We are working on a whole new rebranding. We're making steps towards it. It's amazing. We think you're going to love it. And I'm, you know, it's going to look great on, on merch. We're not there yet in terms of merch, but we're going to do a whole revamping. And at the same time, keep up the support at Sancho West wrestling. I don't care if they're going to ban TikTok. I'm just going to keep on pushing until see what happens. And at the same time, uh, it's going to be really good stuff. And hey, for the Patreons as well, Santi and I, once the schedule kind of gets in line, we're going to work on that WW2K24, my GM. So that's yes, gonna... sir. And you know what? For me, just go check out the uh, the Wrestling is Cool podcast TikTok. I think you're going to like it over yeah. there. It's fine. It's a good time over there. We have a good time. we got a lot there. of fun games. A lot, a lot of fun, fun. games around. A lot of fun games right around the corner. And I know fun. Let me tell you. <laughs> I know fun, brother. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Take care. Be wonderful people. And we'll see you next week. Yeah. Folks, hopefully you enjoyed that episode of Wrestling is Cool. A special extra thank you goes out to our Patreon producers at the $15 tier who help make this show happen. So that producer uh, shout out goes to 2022 Benjamin, Abel Rodriguez, Ben Calloway, Blake Buxo, CB, Chris the Postman, Connor Williamson, Isat, Gavin Alves, Ileana, Jonathan Daly, Jordan Lynch, Lil Shifu, Lucas Wittenhagen, Mako Mac Gaming, Malik Graham, Muhammad Akram El Madawi, Mate Moore, Nicholas Kyle, Ollie, Owen Miller, Robert Dalton, Rodolfo Reyes, Ryan Yelovic, Stucky, Super Malachi Galaxy, The Joe Man, Tom Lehman, Two Crown, Wesley Simpson, Whip One, Xavier Izquierdo, Yagnori, Yellow Wonton, York V2, Zapola, and Zerg Zito. Woo! List is growing, folks. Thank you so much for the support and take care, everybody.